Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and today we're doing multiplication. Well actually this is going to be the grid method of multiplication. If you look at the multiplication overview video you'll see there are loads of different ways to multiply two, two different numbers together. But in this video we're just going to look at the grid method of multiplication. Now when I was at school I was taught the traditional method of multiplication. I didn't come across the grid method until much later. But when I found it I was like wow this is amazing. It's really easy to understand and a lot more intuitive than the traditional method I think. So if you've never done multiplication before, this is the one I'd highly recommend. I'm going to use the same numbers as we did for the traditional multiplication video, so you can compare the two methods directly if you want to. So we'll start with 14 times 32. Now it's the grid method, so you lay it out in a grid, like so. Because it's a two-digit number times a two-digit number, you need a two by two grid. You then split the numbers up and write them down the side and along the top, like so. So 14 becomes 10 and 4, 32 becomes 30 and 2. Okay, you always split them up into the tens and the units, effectively. It doesn't matter which way around you write them, you can put the 14 here and the 32 down the side, you still get the same answer. You then fill out your grid, and essentially it's like a times table grid. So all you do is you multiply the numbers on the outside and that gives you the numbers on the inside. So 10 times 30, we'll go in here, 10 times 30 is 300. 10 times 2 is going to go here, that's obviously 20. 4 times 30, now if you do struggle with the zeros here, working out how many you should have, it's actually very easy to do. Just ignore all the zeros to start with, you do 4 times 3, which gives you 12, and then you look at how many zeros you've got in the question. I've got no zeros here, one zero here, so one zero altogether, so you add one zero on the end. There it is. And then four times two gives you eight. Once you've filled out the grid, you just add up all the numbers inside. So we've got 300 plus 20 plus 120 plus eight. Do be very careful about your columns here, you must make sure you line them up properly. You've got your units, your tens, your hundreds. If you get them in the wrong columns, it's all going to go horribly wrong, so do be careful with that. Now, 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 8. 0 plus 2 plus 2 it gives 4. And 3 plus 1 also gives you 4. So the final answer here is 448. Isn't that nice? Now, if you were to ask me to multiply these two numbers together in my head, that might be quite challenging, but I'd probably attempt some method of splitting them up. I might do 30 times 14 and 2 times 14, or something like that. And that's essentially what this method is doing. It's splitting up all the multiplications as much as it can, so you've got four very easy multiplications to do. Then you just add them up at the end. The addition, though, is always very easy as well, because this always throws out a lot of zeros. And when you're adding up with all these zeros, 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 8, it's not hard. Okay, So that's one of the reasons I really like it. It is very easy to do. Now, if you've got bigger numbers than just two-digit numbers, uh, then the grid is going to become bigger as well. So let me show you one of those, and then I'll give you some final thoughts. So this time we're going to have 36 times 200 and 47. So it's a two digit by a three digit number this time, so you need a two by three grid. Like that. 36 goes down here, and then 247 you put along the top, and you split it up like this, so it's going to be 247. Now you just split it again into hundreds, tens, and units like that. It's a times table grid, fill it out in the same way. So 30 times 200, whew, that's a lot of zeros. Just ignore them all. 3 times 2 is 6. Then count how many zeros you've got. I've got one here, got two zeros here. That's three zeros all together. So you add three zeros on the end. Easy peasy. 30 times 40, well, three fours are 12. And I need to add two zeros. One, two. 30 times 7, well, 3 7s are 21, plus 1 0. And then we do the bottom row, so 6 times 200, well, 2 6s are 12, 
plus two zeros. Six times four is 24, plus the one zero. And six times seven is 42. So that's my grid filled out. And again, nothing very complicated there. Then you add up all the numbers. Now we do have quite a lot of numbers to add up here. But again, as I said, you always end up with a lot of zeros here. So although you've got quite a lot to add, it's actually very easy to do. Okay, so zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus two is uh, two. One plus four is five, plus another four gives you nine. Two plus two plus two plus two, four twos are eight. And six plus one is seven, plus another one gives you eight. So the final answer is 8,892. Now, as you can see, this does take up quite a bit more space than the traditional method. And it takes longer as well. You should be aware of that. If you uh, are confident with the traditional method, you can do multiplication quite quickly. But I think this is a lot easier to understand. And if you've never done multiplication before, I'd strongly recommend you try this method first rather than the traditional method. If you're used to the traditional method, by all means stick with that one. <clears throat> There's no reason to learn a new method for the sake of it. But if you've always struggled with that one, if you never quite got it at school, then try the grid method. It's a lot easier to do in practice, I think. Takes a bit more space, a bit more time, but it's better to take the time and get it right than get all confused with the traditional method if you're not happy with that one. I'm Jonathan Hicks, you've been watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.